And his opponent in the top left. Recently joined Samsung Galaxy. I guess not recently anymore, but still on Samsung yeah. Galaxy nonetheless. It's the blue Terran player. Journey. Okay, so I mentioned before there's some good and some bad things to mention. One of the good things is these are both incredibly good players. So we could get a really epic TVT out of this. The alternative is, and this is more of the casualty of TVT itself, not the players, is these could also be really short games that they don't go past 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, build order counters can be made. Banshees are really good. Reapers on two raxes. Mm -hmm. The one on one opener. There's so many ways that this can go badly quickly for somebody not paying attention. So uh, I'm looking forward to the better matches, but the quick matches yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, I would uh, I would be pretty sad, of course, right, if it did end up being like that, where both of the games ended before, like, 10 minutes. It's just like, ah. <laughs> but I guess the sad part, too, is that one of them also, uh, one will get to advance the event of 16, but one has to fall as well. And right. uh, so this I'm sure that they are more comfortable. Clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, both of them can't make it through just yet. But, I mean, that goes to say for anybody in this whole group and... I would say that out of the two, not just because they're in the winner's match, but if you were to look at the groups, you would think these two players are the more favored um, in this whole group as a whole. So uh, we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see who has to continue to fight and who gets to get an early uh, pass home. Well, I'm wondering if... Because, okay, here's the thing for me. I've seen a lot of... I've actually seen a couple of games where Journey taps out like four minutes in because the Reaper catches him off guard. Sometimes yeah. plays a little bit greedy, sometimes doesn't. In this instance, you'll note he is playing a little bit greedy for the context of what a TVT is. Only two Marines out before starting the reactor. Not bad. Not bad. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. it's the faster CC that really throws me for a loop on this one. Uh, is, yeah. And it's really weak to th things like a one one one. Not so much the Banshees, which Hart appears to be going for, but still can be a little bit scary. Hart opening with a Widowmine is kind of curious to see as well. This could be really good at catching Vikings and maybe helping with a Banshee, but for the most part, he might just end up going for a drop. It's not been so common in TVT, but it's becoming more common where we see like this one Widowmine six marine drop. Uh huh. Not and sure just, if that's what we'll yeah. see. Well, it looks like it will be at least a few marines. Uh, the thing here is that uh, the medevac is almost done. He's already making those. Yeah, I think you're right. Exactly. Six marines should be popping out as soon as that medevac does come out. And he has a straight shot. He's just scouted. He knows uh, where Journey is, who is trying to expand at the moment. Yeah, so this uh. is this is why I'm a little bit worried about this. I, I, again, I mentioned that one 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 a moment ago. One of the big things is this drop. Oh, first of all, he's denying the natural with that. Look at that hellion. That's such no, a No, that hellion. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. Normally there's like one one ones that follow this or attack with this and you've got the Hellion control behind it. Hearts actually going for Banshee control behind it, which is going to be a little bit curious as Journey is going for a Viking, but man, those Hellions should be able to clean this up. I mean, it's going to be a combination of Widowmine, which is light, along with more uh, big units, which again are light. It's just... Yeah, uh, really well-timed uh, turret though, but oh, oh my god. Is that a friendly fire as well? Not really getting too much damage done. No, no. And it's a little bit sad to see for now. You should be able to clean this up, especially with the Viking coming out. Hearts can be so limited on how long he can stay, but this hurts for him a lot because he saw that his opponent yes. has the natural base down. He knows he's the whole command center behind. His is just finishing up, much less got to become an orbital. So I guess the question really remains, like, how much does he want to dedicate to this Banshee? You'll note that he did cancel Cloak. He did, There's yeah. No seeing Cloak that turret. This in favor of the Raven. So um, I can get with that, you know, just going to see how much damage he can get. Most likely, uh, with the turret being there, Already the detection is there, so Cloak is not going to really be a factor at all. So it's just going to be up to the micro, see if he can equalize just a bit. Because uh, he's actually not... Oh, he did get his uh, command center, so... A little bit later than his opponent at the time. And Journey, you know, he said that he was opening up pretty... Well, relatively greedy. But he gets away with it, you know? And he, he knows how to hold that early pressure, it seems like. And he did it really nicely there. Um, yeah, I don't think he took really any losses. Not... Well, it's a good start, but the follow-up to this looks like it's going to be Mech for Journey. I think this is really cool. Mech in a TVT is not unheard of by any means, but it's uh, a nuance, I think we could call mm -hmm. it, to say the least. Uh, one of the most interesting aspects of it, though, is like Mech versus Mech is actually not the greatest option, but Mech versus Bio can sometimes be really good. You get those Hellbats with Blue Flame dropping on top of the Marines. They yep. just melt. Yeah, I was wondering, when I saw him continue to produce a lot of those Hellions, I was like, hey, is he really going to go into this? And uh, it looks like he might, just uh, he does have the capabilities of making those Hellbats. But uh, yeah, he's just going to be focusing on that, 
a lot of Hellions and uh, already getting that plus one upgrade. While Heart going into, uh, whoa, a little bit of an engagement here. Gonna have uh, room for a po point defense drone as well as a turret if he chooses one or the other. I mean, in this situation, the only thing you'd really point defense drone would be the Vikings, right? Or Oh, uh, I guess, yeah, both ways she's really interesting the limits. Because uh, point defense drone would affect the Vikings for Journey, but point defense drone would affect the Banshee for Heart. So mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit funny. Uh, they like shooting down, but like different directions. Uh. It, I mean, the point defense is a nice thing to fantasize about. And if you're a Zerg player, you've learned to hate that unit. But in TVT, oh, yeah. auto turrets actually get used quite frequently. Their damage is pretty good, but they also have that really annoying, like, high priority target. The priority that, thing, uh, yeah. Can distract tank shots, distract banshee shots. Even if it's just one shot that it soaks up, it's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Gives you time to stim in and get a nice position and some shots off as well. So, uh, I wonder if. Hard has recognized this as mech already. I mean, I don't know if he actually saw those Hellbats, did he? I know he saw the uh, the Vikings as well, but I wasn't sure if he saw that. He does know slightly about the infrastructure. Yeah, he saw the second factory, Hart, so... Yeah, he knows that's going to be mech. This wasn't, yeah. uh, it's not a question of if at this point. Mm -hmm. So, he's going to be going for his own style. And, uh, I mean, when you're our bio going up against mech, you typically, what, just kind of focus more on peeling apart... Uh, finding where they're weak at because of their more a mobile army uh, in comparison to your mobile army. God, this is like, such a big army journey. Won't be. It was scary yeah. for them. Like, this is all super effective against what Hart has. I mean, the Banshee is going to help a bit. There's no blue flame, but who needs it? They already have so much base damage in the first place, and that splash is fantastic. If he if he gets on low directly on top of the tanks, and he should, there's really not that much anti-air. Hart is going to uh, feel the burn. Journey can also yeah. double secret missile the tank and take it out really quick too. There's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah, all depends on how you do a fancy. Oh wow, actually he's gonna salvage this bunker here. Didn't manage to get this third. Oh, already Journey's made journey though. He's going really home. scared. Push, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think he I was, could have taken a fight there. To be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know. Did he? He didn't see anything, did he? He just was like, you know what? I just want to go home. All right. Well. Safe the sorry. going to be the one that's aggressive now. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, how how he'll manage this. He doesn't know about the third base of Journey. This is just a push that he's making uh, to line up with this combat shield, it looks like. I do believe Stim should be complete as well. Uh, plus one is already done too, and uh, Journey's not really in a defensive position yet. You know, a lot of his units are in his medevacs at the moment, and I don't think he realizes that Hart is pushing. Ooh. Banshee, though, gets taken yeah, gets out. Sniped. That would have been good for picking off tanks, because there's not really that much ground to air. In fact, any ground to air just yet. But uh, Secret Missile's going to come down most likely on one of these tanks. He's really going forward with this. Secret Missile's coming down. Now, what is that wow. Raven for the oh. Hellbat in the back? Okay, he takes and a lot of fire from this, but the Hellbats unload on top of the tanks. They might be unseized, but that's a lot of Hellbats to push through. However, stimming and walking away, kiting through this, he's going to pick up in the medevacs and try and go once again once that boost comes off cooldown. But without his own tanks siege, this is a really hard fight to take. Journey is certainly in a bad position right here, to say the least. Yeah. He hasn't decided oh. what he wants to do just There's yet, and uh, Hart has a great position here with the three tanks. Did he lose all the Vikings? No, he's still going for Vikings because they're not the medevacs. I don't know why he's not. Uh, he's got his own, again, point defense drones or seeker missiles or whatever he wants out of his Raven. Uh, I should put the point defense drones down, but they get taken out really quickly by the Marines' focus fire. So Marauders do get their shots off. Yeah, that was actually some good uh, time that they did buy. But, uh, oh, another shot going to take out that medevac. And uh, this is a weird position because it's not like he seized up on the natural or uh, on the third, rather. He just has this position that feels like a contain, but... Journey is probably fine hanging out there for now if uh, Hart doesn't really put any more pressure on. He wasn't in like a dire situation where he needed to act right then. But he is. He's trying to keep a tab on where he is. Hart trying to get a cheeky position here. But the Hellbat drops going down on everything. It's going to negate the tank fire. That's quite a bit of Hellbats here. Doing pretty well against everything. But uh, he will pick on up and... Uh, no, go right back in. Finish off yeah. the job. Trying to at least. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the wrong units. A little bit awkward <laughs> to see, but the sky control for journey is what I'm a little bit disappointed in. So many of these medevacs should have been picked off well prior to this. And yeah, there's some mm -hmm. marines you're a little bit worried about diving in too deep and all that, but uh, it's the medevacs that are kind of spotting for heart. You know, every time you burn a scan, it's way different than leaving a medevac on whole position on the front lines. Yeah, I think, and also the big important thing to note is the tank count. Uh, journey has managed to still be here at eight tanks and Hart lost all but one and is just starting to reproduce them again. 
So uh, maybe just focusing more on the Marauders and uh, getting better positioning, catching those mech army out of position and unseized. Uh, I'm a little bit worried for that tank count if he's going to be going for this style. If it, it seemed to be a low marine tank, but now it's just marauder heavy, not focusing as much. Yeah, three marauders getting produced at a time. Yeah, he's just going to be trying to catch uh, that army out of position, perhaps. That's a big if, though. I mean, it's a, uh, it's an ambitious dream. I think but more than happen. this, though, you look at the actual upgrades for Hart right now. I didn't realize his armory is so late, so his yeah. plus two doesn't get started for quite some time. Mm hmm It's going to be a long ways away and not going to be able to rely on that. That's the, the firepower that comes out of the Marauders whenever you do uh, get a position on them. But this is just uh, the dance, you know, the good old uh, TVT dance. And here we go, though, unseized. I don't know. Do you think he just doesn't even siege up here? Uh, they help us at the top of the army divide it into, like, Moses parting the seas, the red yep. seas, if you will. Hey. But uh, Fun Defense Show <laughs> took up a lot of that Marauder damage. Really not a lot left. And Hart's going to be the one to tap out. GG, Journey, will take it. But hey guys, welcome back here to the ASL Season 4. This is the Prime League. Uh, these two Prime players actually uh, in their Prime for sure. As uh, They're going to be going at each other trying to make it to that round of 16. And uh, who is it going to be though? Well, he is currently down one at the moment, spawning in the top right corner of the map. Yeah, it's going to be Axiom's Red Terran. Heart. And his opponent, he mecked it happen, he made it happen, however you want to grammatize that one. Spawning in the bottom left, it's Samsung Galaxy's Journey. <laughs> Alright, Journey is a hell of a guy. It's fun watching him play. He's uh, talented to say the least, but I don't know, man. Sometimes, just sometimes you get a little bit lucky, and I think there's a con I'm not going to say luck carried him in that matchup, but it was you know, one part luck, one part composition, and one part catching Hart a little off guard uh, that really added together to make uh, that game go so well for him. And I mean, that wasn't a small victory either. He skill. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I'm not going to even like refute that, but uh, he did. <laughs> He did take a really one-sided engagement towards the end of that, and that's the danger of playing mech without your own air control. That's the danger of TVT in a nutshell. Like Whether you're playing anything, Vikings are kind of the unsung heroes of the matchup. I think a lot of people look at the tanks and like, oh, that tank line, oh, that marine line, oh, AMG, but it's it's really the Vikings controlling the vision. It's Vikings picking on medevacs. If Hart, yeah. like, let's say in an imaginary world, Hart had a lot of Vikings with that army composition. He couldn't because of the cost, but let's say he did. Yeah, true. Then those Hellbats would have never had the free reign to just boost in, divide the army in half like that, and splash everything down. Yeah, that happens so easily. Like, um, even going back for that tank, it was so casual. There was nothing really to contest it. You know, just like, hey, I'm just going to kill this tank and there's nothing you can do about it. So, uh, definitely getting the upper hand in that, those engagements as well. And the upgrades too, you know, we were talking about that, how uh, hearts were quite far behind while he was going for that bio style. Uh, but Journey, this game, uh, looks in like he is, is this similar build to, uh, this is a later command center, so. But it's still not like a heart. Heart looking to get aggressive once again. This time getting a tech lab immediately, so we're probably not going to see that that uh, widow mine drop that we saw. It's uh, it, it's such a it was a weird it drop was... too. I mean that's the thing. It it wasn't like okay, this is a widow mine drop that's standard like in PVZ or or sorry TVP or TVZ maybe, but TVT I I don't know. They man. don't even one shot the uh, workers though, right? So you have to uh, just soften them up, and then hopefully the rest of your drop will be able to get the damage done. So. Um, I actually, I'm sorry about this, I have to take care of something in real life real quick, so I'm gonna okay. just <laughs> totally ditch you on a matchup you're unfamiliar with, and I'm super sorry, but I'll be like no, 5 cool. minutes most, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. Alright, so, uh, Rifkin has to take care of some things, but, uh, we'll be going into this TVT, we are in game number two, of course, and, uh, the choice of tech here from Hart is going to be the Cloak Banshee, and then he's actually getting his expansion now. Uh, this Reaper is going to be able to find out exactly what is going on. He does get taken out, unfortunately. But Journey opening up with that command center once again. And uh, with the Viking, so he will be able to deal with the Banshee. Uh, this Reaper, though, will be able to find out what is going on inside of the base. Just to see what he can uh, prepare for. And we may even see uh, Cloak Banshee coming out of Journey as well. Um, even though it is a bit later and he did manage to go ahead and get that Viking out. But it's nice that he has the Viking, so... Uh, 
with the turret up already and the capabilities, you could make a Raven uh, to make it even easier. Oh, there was a, a Widow Mine there that the uh, Reaper didn't see. And yeah, so the Raven, this is just a safer route. So he knows that Banshee's around the way, and getting the Raven allows him to chase it with the uh, Viking and allow it so that uh, the Banshee doesn't get a lot of damage done. So he's already been mining from his natural. Once again, taking that economic lead and uh, showing to be in a good, he's showing that he might be in a position where he doesn't actually take a lot of damage. I uh, wonder if Hart canceled the cloak. No, he did let it finish. He's going to continue to make those... Uh... Oh, no, he stopped uh, Banshee production, rather. So he'll just have one. Investing in the cloak may be a little bit unfortunate if he doesn't really get any benefit from it, but I feel like uh, even in a battle, you can utilize those cloak Banshees, and it's going to get a lot of energy over that time since he's not using it, realizing that he's probably not going to get anything done. So my question that I'm asking myself is that uh, will we see Hart... Uh, will we see Journey go into mech once again? Uh, we saw it last game on Deadwing, but it could be map specific. You never know how these players do like to play. But with the amount of Hellions that he's continuing to make and uh, switching over to that starport, we still can't tell unless... Okay, now we know because there goes the other factory. So once again, we are going to see mech out of Journey. And uh, he has a solid opener here. A very solid opener going into mech. We saw him do it last game. And uh, even though Hart didn't do his kind of crazy Widowmine shenanigans, he's setting up himself and just we'll see how he's able to go about this game. Or if he even will switch it up, you know? Uh, we haven't seen any additional infrastructure just yet. But for some reason, I always think about Hart of uh, going for Bio in pretty much all of his matchups. You know, Stim is on the way, but we see the plus one vehicle weapons here coming out from Journey. But the Viking count, we were talking about that for Hart last game that it was lacking. This game, no, he's not slacking at all. He's up to four. Siege tank count up to two. Journey has not even made a siege tank just yet. And now the Raven is actually going to get taken out. No PDD and no air dominance either. Now, how are you going to get these uh, Hellbat drops done, Journey? If those Vikings, this is a little different than last game. He needs to be a bit more careful. And uh, there's only two siege tanks and they are going to spread out this time. And uh, Journey is in an awkward position, I would say. He wants to boost those, uh, but he can't. Bunker's going to go down. The SCVs are going to hightail it out of there, too. And now the Cloak Banshees are actually getting a bit of value. Even though that turret is in range, uh, sieging up is getting closer and closer of heart. Journey looking for that opportunity to go, but oh my god, he's actually in pursuit with that Viking. And I feel like Journey is just waiting, waiting as, uh, to the last minute. Heart never going to allow those Vikings to be in the sky. Even the Vikings uh, keeping watch for these Banshees as the tank is going to get taken out as it goes down the ramp. And what is Journey to do here? He's actually in a very awkward position. The Seize Tank is uh, firing down on that command center, which is not getting repaired. Another Seize Tank will join the battle, and now here he goes. Journey looking to make a good drop happen, but it is not even close to being enough, I don't think. Blue Flame is complete. So those Marines are going to get taken down too quickly, but it doesn't even matter. Heart takes game number two and evens up the series one to one. So really nicely done there. And ladies and gentlemen, I am Tempo and Rifkin is back. My buddy, my partner in crime has returned. Yeah, I would just like and, to quickly uh, apologize again for my absence towards the latter half of that game. That was really unprofessional and cool, but it was something I couldn't wait. So that being said, Spawny here in the bottom left of the map, taking a really quick gas, I might add. It's going to be the orange Sharon player. Journey. And his opponent in the top right with an equally fast gas. In fact, an equally faster gas. It's going to be the red Terran. Heart. All right, so Heart's got a factory coming down much, much sooner than Journey. Does yeah. Does that really matter right now? It really depends on what Journey's follow up to this goes. If he goes for a factory himself into what is. Uh, well, I mean, it's it going to be Barracks Factory, Starport, one or the other. But the question is, what direction does it take? You know, is it a yeah. drop? Is it uh, Banshees? I mean, really, a lot of this is going to be influenced by the fact that he took his gas a little behind Heart. And if it's a mirror matchup, it goes a little bit better for Heart. For Journey's sake, though, I don't imagine we're going to see him... If he is going to double gas, that would kind of surprise me, to be honest. I would expect him to take a faster CC. In fact, there we go. A faster CC, like we saw earlier today, uh, puts it down on location. And this is, again... 
really uh, it's not super super greedy, but it is greedy for this early game. Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems to be his preference, though. You know, it uh, ended up working out for him both times for the most part. It was just that, uh, well, you missed the last, the end of the last game was just pretty much Hart getting really uh, lucky with uh, the sniping of the Ravens, so there was no uh, point defense drone able to be put down. And then once he lost that, he lost his Vikings, and then the siege was so easy uh, for Hart to do. Uh, but he was setting up in a, for a really nice position, but it got a little well, caught. I don't believe he yeah. went CC for his last game, or early CC at all, did he? It was not like as early as Deadwing, but it was, it still was. Um, he did the same thing, I believe, with the, uh, he did a factory first, though, before a CC, I think. Okay, okay. So, this one was the barracks reactor into the CC, I believe, and then... But Hart has never put down an earlier CC. He always gets his 1-1-1 and then goes into uh, his his expansion. Well, it's it's actually not a 1-1-1 this time. He's going for a Banshee. Uh, what am I in purely defensive for the time being? He can follow it up with a Medivac, mm -hmm. of course. But uh, going to be diving across the map with this Banshee. And quite frankly, there are holes in Journey's defense. There's going to be spots mm -hmm. where he's vulnerable. Scans are going to have to be burned. And uh, hopefully, whatever, wherever he puts this wood of mine, it'll be good enough to catch the initial Banshee. Now, he will, of course, be getting his own Medivac behind this, but... You know, timing on this should be that the Banshee's there before he loads up and moves out. So he should be able to use all these units defensively first. Ooh, in fact, it's yeah. going to be a Viking. He has very much intentionally set this up to catch the Banshee. Anticipating yeah. this is the case, he scans, confirms the main. What am I in a good intercept position on both sides of the map, actually, expecting uh, these Banshees to be coming. But Hart's not going to take the conventional route. He's going to go through the natural. Yeah, he's actually, there's no bunker. Oh, there's no uh, Marines inside of the bunker. They could get in there, but uh, there's nothing protecting the mineral line. So... There is a bit of a chance for this Banshee to get a, some damage done. We'll see if Journey does a little bit of the bait oh, here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, oh, oh, oh. It can't Hard? one shot a Banshee, but it takes it really oh, damn low. The Vikings yeah. look at to finish this off. Does Hart have Cloak? Hart does not have Cloak, so he's got to run for his life. Both units move at 2.75 movement speed, so he should be able to stay ahead of him, par for the course. Mm-hmm. It's like, get back here. <laughs> it's like the most uh, awkward chase where he just can't. You can get away, but the, the Viking just really wants that last shot. If it had popped out a little bit earlier, he would have been able to kill it. But, you know, luckily for Hardy, we'll get that home. And we saw the Banshee actually coming into play in the push as well. He had two cloaked Banshees that he didn't use for harassment, so they had full energy. Mm. And then without the Raven, you needed to have the uh, the turret or a scan. But they just went to work. Oh, is Journey knocking down his rocks right now? That's out of his natural? Oh. He is. Uh, okay, so that's going to... Oh, cool. yeah, it looks like he will. What do you think of that? It's just like to uh, uh, look, look at him is, funnier. Well, no, this is nothing crazy, but we'll close off the path, the fastest path possible for, say, like, Hellions to run across the map or any unit to rally across the map. Like, Hart's going to have to take this weird, windy path to actually get to the natural base if he's going to push. Yeah. I don't think this is really game-changing and devastating, but it is interesting seeing somebody use those rocks. I know, right? Just to, I mean, sometimes you'll see players, like, take knock it down and then kill it just so that it can't be utilized at all. Uh... But, nope, he's going to keep it down for now, and he's actually going to go for bio this time, so... Yeah, we saw him going for mech for both times before, but, you know, a little bit different this time, switching it up, showing that he is a bit versatile, and um, that might throw Hart for a loop, because he's kind of gotten used to uh, how Journey has been playing in the series. Ending up taking that last game, and he's like, alright, cool, if I just do what I did last time, I can win, but... It's going to be a completely different game this time, as Journey is loading up his medevacs. And uh, getting ready to get a bit aggressive with the drops himself. There's no drop defense at all uh, for Hart. So, like, no turret or, uh, like, on the side. Or, but he does have the Widow Mine. Just in a weird position with this tank at the natural. But uh, mm. with the Viking and the Raven, I think he should be able to uh, scare this drop a bit. I mean, uh, make a journey think twice, but maybe he'll still go for it. I almost wish he had let that go through to the Widow Mine and then taken out one of the Yeah. It's so sick. But, uh, okay, so it's not bad, it's not good, it's kind of just, again, a bit of a stale game. We do have plus one weapons here for Journey. This kind of reminds me of the way Marine King plays quite a bit, faster plus one, earlier CCs. Uh, mm -hmm. These are greedy builds that can sometimes be punished quite early, but the one weapon upgrade, it sounds so silly and so insignificant. But I think Terran versus Terran perhaps has the most dynamic upgrade advantage differences, especially with the combat shells comes into effect a little bit later. But regardless of yeah. your plus one or not, Sea Shakes are still going to fall off of you from far away, and he's <laughs> yep. going to pick up out of here. Indeed. Trying to get a bit of damage done, not really getting it, but uh, only loses a few of the Marines there. Not really too bad, but he does I was thinking that maybe he would... He does a pretty nice would... SUV lead, though. 
Oh, that banshee just can't catch a break. <laughs> Flies over another widow mine and gets blown up again. He's like, ah, damn it. <laughs> yeah, but it's still <laughs> alive. Go home and get repaired. Still yeah. alive, which is good. I would hate to be that pilot though. Like, think about that. Like, it's like, oh my god, dude, it's crazy. It's flying through the expedition, lost, and they came out of nowhere, like twice. Yeah, it's very traumatizing. So, one of the things about that though is. The Banshee living can actually be used to help break tank lines a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, oftentimes it'll be that weird time where there's not a lot of Vikings in the sky, both players have marine tank lines just lined up and good to go, and sometimes that Banshee is just that little bit extra push you need, so I really like that it's still alive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously he didn't invest too much into it, but the fact that it's still alive and it didn't uh, just fly into a widow mine and then get picked off, so... Uh... Definitely nice. Of course, it has been <clears throat> kind of hogging some resources for that repair, but it's not. It's kind of a negligible amount. Um, Journey though, going for this third base. He tried to do this a bit last time, but uh, was then he got caught uh, doing this, taking a third and then losing his units in the middle of the map. But this time, he seems to be getting there really uh, comfortably, at least for now. He's up to 62 SCVs as well, and uh, you know his tank count is not too bad. He's actually matching that of Hearts. Just on the positioning. Well, it's it's a hard position to break. I like the defensive setup for Journey. He's really widespread, and you might think, well, that's bad because it's less mm -hmm. units to fight with. But it's a better chance he takes a proper engagement. Hart's not exactly pushing with tanks, so his tanks don't need to reposition. I like this defensive stance, but um, mm -hmm. again, supply count looking somewhat even. They're, the dynamics yeah. of this kind of are like Journey's got more workers, so Hart's gonna have a bigger army at the end of the day. But uh, yeah. can he get there as fast as Journey? He's also behind in upgrades just a little bit. Uh, one one will be equalized soon-ish, but then Journey's gonna be on two one. Middle of the map, big engagement about to go down. A couple yeah. of medics to get caught, but it's not that big of a deal. The tanks are not with Journey's army, so a couple Marines getting picked off here and there. And the rocks were broken down since earlier. And Scans now he's uh, yep, looking like he wants to try it's to push even. here, but. So you yeah. muscle hype, maybe? That's going to be so, tanks. yeah, crucial. He's, what is he going to use it for? He can get one of the tanks pretty easily if he wants to break just one. Uh, Auditor is always cool to see, but I think taking out one of the tanks would be a good start for him. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a little bit awesome. He's not careful. He might lose one of his own. Yeah, he's going to pull that back a little bit. Uh, tank shots are quite devastating. Again, the, the bonus damage they deal is insane. You can really make up for a supply deficit if you've got enough. But, oh, mm -hmm. Marie's going to stim in here. Whoa. Gets baited into the tank fire. Gets the Raven for it, though, so kind of worth it. Yeah, I would say so. It doesn't even really lose too many Marines. But I feel like, uh, can Hart really even push here? I mean, is this more so uh, just a standoff? Because I feel like if he goes down that ramp, that is just going to be obliteration. He's actually going to do a little bit of uh, damage here. Taking down the rocks here to the main. Puts uh, Journey in an awkward position where he's going to have to defend his nav, well, his, uh, his main. Well, it's really nice because he does have that sensor tower up. So he sees the sap. Yeah. He sees the movements of Hart through this. Uh, and it's really awkward. It's, it's a little bit stalemate because if Hart pushes down the ramp, he pushes into a concave. But he's trying to bait a fight to come to him. Siege tanks will siege up here on the high ground. And I think Hart's a little bit out of position. So his tanks are going to go down. Oh, but he no! He's behind this. And while this goes on, he breaks the rocks. He's going to pull the Marines back, though. Try and maybe reposition. He could just stim up this ramp. There's not that many tanks over here waiting for him. Sensor so Tower, really expensive. Big pickoff out of him. But he's going to not be able to push. There's too many tanks and too well defended. Journey's oh, upgrades man. Well, really nice right now. Yeah, that was such a weird position where he was trying to do two things at once, but uh, Journey smelled that and he said, yo, I'm just going to push on up and the tanks were right at the front. And if you look at that, 3 to 10 tanks, uh, not bad at all. Although the marine count does go to heart, uh, just the fact that those upgrades, like you were saying, are going to be far ahead for Journey. And he already has a tank count, so... I mean, uh, what is... Uh, I feel like Hart has to make something happen here, as he's just not starting to mine from his third. It, it's a tough situation to be in. I mean, it's it's really not about the tank count. It's not about the marine count. It's going to be about positioning more than anything else. Forcing yeah. your opponent into a concave versus a con like it's these chokes are so hard for Hart to get through. His best bet yep. is either to break the tanks, and if he does, it's risky. This marines might shoot down those medevacs. They get oh. picked off immediately. Oh, oh down no! Ramp, the Good game. It's called the journey, ladies and gentlemen. We'll finish first in the group. Well done, journey, journey, journey. Samsung Galaxy uh, representing. It's gonna take it's out heart there.